just I just remembered that when I was a young man, actually when I was in high school, I wanted to become an astrophysicist. I was really fascinated by the expanse of space and what exactly is out there and what exactly isn't. But I didn't make it, right? Here I am on Biashara Tuesday. This is also a good space. You can call me a Biashara Tuesday astronaut. I am here with uh, Fidel Makatia, HSC. I realized I didn't mention the HSC next to his name. You don't just mention a HSC like it's a normal name, yeah? So it is Fidel Makatia, HSC, right? Make sure that you mention that when you see him, the team leader of uh, Kenyatta University Cube Nano Satellite project uh, in which he's going to help us understand what was the project they are doing in the Cube Nano. And if they have a cube they are sending out to space, they actually do. How have they done that so far? What are some of the projects they've done? How did you get to HSC, by the way, is what we are uh, discussing around. So welcome to the show and welcome to death. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Karibu kwa show bwana HSC. Ah, sante sana. Nifanye nini bwana? Hata mimi nataka Richard Okenye OGW. It's, it's, it's normally Richard Okenye the OG, but I want to add the W. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get there? Um, for us, we got it from um, the ventilator, mm. the ventilator project. Mm. So the president awarded us for the change we were doing in the country. Mm. So I think you can go that way because that's what we have gone. But ah. I don't know the other ways you can get. <laughs> yeah. You can get it. You guys are innovators. Let's start with the ventilator. It made quite the news. I, I, you guys were recognized by the United Nations. Maybe a brief uh, intro to that for the people who don't know you. Uh, maybe have been living under a rock if they don't know you. But can you tell us anything around uh, something about around the innovation that happened last year that led all the way to the HSC before we get to this? Yeah, sure, sure. So early last year, COVID-19 came to the country. It was announced as a pandemic and the president locked down every school, university. So as we decided that uh, instead of going on lockdown, let's put our minds to work. So mm. we came together. And by that time, Kenya had a, an acute shortage of ventilators. Mm. There were, I think, less than a thousand and a 50, 50 million uh, Kenyans population. Mm -hmm. So it was an acute shortage. And by that time, countries were not allowing um, ventilators to be exported from their countries because mm -hmm. they, they were in need of them. Mm -hmm. And there was a high demand of ventilators. So the only way, the only person who could save the country was God. Mm -hmm. And he actually did it. Mm -hmm. But he also said, okay, as engineering students and future engineers, it's our job to make ventilate. It's our job so, to solve problems in the society. Mm -hmm. So what we did, we actually came together, uh, decided, okay, let's make a machine that is going to help this, this situation. Mm -hmm. That's when we came together, made the machine. Mm -hmm. Within three months, we had a ventilator, mm -hmm. which was very fast because it usually takes six months to design, seven years to test. But seven us, years? Yeah, up to seven years to test. Uh -huh. So as it, as it, it took us three months to design and mm -hmm. develop. Then by up to now, it's one year of testing. So mm -hmm. we're actually doing very fast. How, how is it? How is it so far in the one year of testing? It's performing very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually in the final stage of testing of the ventilator before we can avail it commercially. You guys were pioneers, and if I understand, the only one so far who've done a ventilator in the country. Yeah, that's true. Uh, mostly when you're a student, and, and I'm understanding you guys did it while you're still engineering students. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Right, so um, mostly when someone is a student and they're trying to come up with an innovation or a solution to problems that are happening around them or in society, kuna ile voice from people who are saying, ah, you think you're going to do it? You think Aga Khan hasn't thought about that? You don't think the government has thought about that? Do you, did you get to a point where you felt that maybe someone else has already tried to do this, but uh, they have failed, so we shouldn't try? What, what kept you pushing to innovate something that is very relevant to us? Uh, that's very true. I remember there's a day we were in our second week of uh, developing the ventilator. We went to buy material somewhere in town. Mm -hmm. And on that queue, there's somebody who's, who came and said, ah, I'm a biomedical engineer. I... I, he didn't know we were there, so he was talking to the guy we were buying things from in the mm. hardware. Mm. So was telling him, these students think they have made a machine, but they will kill people. Uh. You don't just make ventilators in Africa, they have to be made in specialized labs and things like that. Mm. So we got discouraged, but what helped us is that we surrounded, the university has a system of mentors, mm -hmm. which they formed a committee called Committee of Experts mm -hmm. for to help us do mm -hmm. the ventilator. Mm -hmm. So they really cushioned us because they were professionals, mm -hmm. from engineering to medicine to pharmacy to nursing. Mm -hmm. So they really helped 
helped us with knowledge number one number two uh they helped us with motivation mm. because by that time they can't nairobi itself was in lockdown so no mm-hmm. parent could come parents could only call so yeah, they were true. the parents at that time mm-hmm. so you, if you surround yourself with positive vibes you will mm-hmm. actually do it but actually there is a lot of uh, negative vibes mm-hmm. especially if you're doing a pioneering uh, a lot of walk. dissenting voice i understand yes mm-hmm. and now in the before we get to the nano cube and uh, maybe that there's also some dissenting voice that are happening around that because obviously i haven't seen anywhere in kenya where students have tried to put something out to space mm-hmm. but now in the time that you've tested the uh, ventilator since development now testing it you have received a lot of accolades how does that feel for you as an entrepreneur first of all well uh, the first feeling is uh, when we tested the ventilator it, it performed better than the local common brands the mm. common brands which are important so mm. when it performed better we were so happy mm. Be- even before the accolades came oh, when right. we did it in the lab in the workshop there in the school of engineering mm. and we, we took a commercial ventilator tested it with ours and ours mm. was the one which kept all the standards Must we, have were, we were so happy you see <laughs> you see it's a dream of every engineer to make a machine that can be used by humans mm. so we was like what we have then that is when our started coming and we were like okay so the country also appreciates uh, mm. innovation not just the uh, bbi and other <laughs> things yeah. nay mambo ingine ya serikali yes so now you've received accolades since then and a lot of people have uh, seen you now you're in the light you have a hsc my guy the head of state commendation does that limelight or that uh, profile that you've now attracted you and your teammates of course in general has that affected progress or boosted it in any way yeah it has it has really um i can say uh, a good name is better even mm-hmm. the bible says a good name is better mm-hmm. so uh the accolades they have actually helped us number one is uh, it's easy to if i i founded a company called afex some time back mm-hmm. and it's easy to do business with a company because mm-hmm. uh, guys you have a, some trust because guys have seen your track record mm-hmm. it's like having an online cv where you don't have to introduce yourself again yeah, guys are like, like ah, ah that guy I know you you just come to the interview there's no need to apply for so yeah. at least it has helped us a mile. Mm. Yeah. Right now let's talk about Afex. Okay. What is Afex all about? What is under Afex? Okay, so after the ventilator we said okay, we have done it in the medical field. Why don't we now f- officially form an entity that will be using technology and engineering to solve common problems mm-hmm. that's when afex now came to be mm-hmm. so afex is is a com- as a technology company which applies the knowledge and principles of technology and engineering to solve problems not only in Kenya Africa but even beyond Africa mm. so we said okay there is tesla there is virgin galactic there is apple there is huawei there is samsung why is it that there is no tech company in Africa which mm. is known a big name mm-hmm. somebody said if you take safaricom as it is and you take it to the US it will be a small sme it will be a, an sme it will be a very small a company <laughs> yeah, like even a startup so mm. we said okay why don't we form a company that can compete with tech with tesla like mm. spacex mm-hmm. that's when we came up with afex mm. so afex focus mostly on princip- uh, applying principles of engineering and technology mm. to problems in the society mm. Mm. Yeah. i i i was following applying principles i thought it would be spelling out the afex is it an abbreviation for no, something no. yeah afex we just the five the first five guys who formed afex we just took our names wow. first letters of the names and we we formed Afex. Ah <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's talk about your team. How does it look like at Afex? Okay, so um at that time, you know, when we were forming Afex, it was in a lockdown scenario. I remember we formed it in a lab, electrical engineering lab. Mm. Where That's how you formed down, a company. Yeah, we formed <laughs> we said okay, let's form a company. That you make a very good this, story in the future. Dealing this. Yeah, sure. It mm. <laughs> Yeah, you guys started out in the lab and we <laughs> and we said so uh we have uh the Afex the Afex name mm-hmm. the A stands for Alan. He mm-hmm. does by medical engineering. Mm-hmm. F is me. I did electrical in campus. Mm-hmm. Then the E is Eric. He does civil but he's an expert in uh, machine learning. Mm-hmm. Then the C is Cynthia who, da, who did electrical in campus but mm-hmm. he is kind of the one who now runs the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, she d- she do b- she does business but she also good in signal processing. Mm-hmm. And there is uh, S Steve mm-hmm. who did biomedical but is very good in uh, mechanical design. Mm-hmm. Of, co- of course the other guys on Afex currently uh, and uh, so the composition is mainly engineers because what we do Like for example most projects we're working on currently we are picking the problem and solve it from ground up mm. this helps us number one to 
apply the principles effectively because we need to customize it mm. to fe- to address the real problem mm. let me give you an example when covid came and uh, guys were using thermal guns and and uh, guards to check for temperatures, temperatures. and face masks mm. we said okay let's make a machine learning mo- model and a machine that can do that automatically mm. so you see we had to build from ground up because there's nothing like that there was nothing like, like that, that in the market the at that time mm-hmm. so that's what affects that's the value of affects ingenuity how mm-hmm. do we to take this problem and use engineering to actually address it. Wow, your team is uh, made up of engineers and uh, you are an engineering student at Kenyatta University. Okay. And if I understand correctly uh, from the information that I have gathered is that you got the highest GPA ever since the School of Engineering started. Yeah, we thank God for that. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> yeah, my guy. Thank you. So, your aspects, the aspects of engineering that you guys have studied in school, of course, they are very important in ensuring uh, how you develop the solutions you're giving out. So how do you ensure that they are still in touch with uh, what is happening on the ground? Since most of you are engineers, how do you source the problems that are there in society for your innovations? So uh, problems come in different ways. Uh, for example, if you look at the developed countries, their problem is you just wake up you see a problem okay mm. uh, i have a problem with maybe sending files from somebody so let me develop a uh, telegram or wechat or mm. something mm. so there are many ways you can find problems but kenya uh, africa at large is blessed with a lot of problems you cannot <laughs> you cannot really <laughs> miss cannot a problem outrun our problems. yeah you cannot really if you just get out for example if you get out you go into social media you see guys are talking about electric cars but in kenya there's no even charging infrastructure mm-hmm. the ones that are there they take eight hours to charge your car mm. so you see you cannot be a bus driver and you're charging a car for eight hours you wouldn't make any profit yeah so that's when we said okay why don't we develop a dc charging infrastructure which take 30 minutes to charge because mm-hmm. that's the fastest mm-hmm. that's a problem we are trying to address mm-hmm. and if you come to africa see that's what we are trying to solve currently mm-hmm. from the ground up or you find guys i saw social media somebody got a tesla but drove it for some distance then he had to be told because there's nothing there's no, there's no charge yeah. yeah so it's just an african problem you can see mm. of course the other problem which come from experience yeah, me i've been experiencing this problem since i was young and i've been trying to solve please let's solve mm. so we usually have a, a brainstorming session as a company mm-hmm. and uh, guys float problem we put them in a tank mm. so we we uh, r- rank and do a metric system on a- a- each of them see which one mm-hmm. which one comes as a priority that's when we try to address all right now let's get to the space you guys are trying to send something out um very innovative of you guys and um, can, you're the team leader of uh, kenyatta university cube nano satellite project uh, sure little introduction to what the cube nano satellite project is about before maybe you get to the project itself Okay, so early last year, my dean forwarded me a call by Kenya Space Agency. So Kenya Space Agency, there's a researcher, his name is uh, Mr. Charles. So he said, see, it's a new thing. Mm-hmm. I'm sure most people don't even know about Kenya Space Agency. True. They know about uh, NASA. NASA, because yeah. NASA is very, you know, the very Chinese known. one. Mm-hmm. So they said, okay, let's build this, do a capacity building to Kenyan re- universities because universities are centers of research and mm-hmm. learning. Mm-hmm. So they started, they said they are going to give out 5 million, 1 million to each university to do a uh, just a capacity building on a nano satellite and space mm-hmm. so when i when you, i got he forwarded it to me first when i got the call he told me go through it see if it's it's viable we can apply for it mm-hmm. then i said sir this is very interesting and i said one of the one of the common problems that we can solve which is a, a, a pressing problem in kenya is mm-hmm. uh, by tw- in 2020 that time there was a locust migration in the country mm-hmm. where guys it started from northeastern but now guys in western kenya were waiting what time <laughs> will the locust come yeah because course. they didn't know a way of predicting or knowing it will be here by next week mm. so each farmer was guarding putting yeah. watch and yeah. waiting mm, so once they see scene. that's when they so we said okay why don't we have an eye in space where we can you can tell farmers by next week locusts will be here so get ready mm. prepare so we predict these patterns of uh, agricultural disasters because even ag- agriculture itself is the backbone of the economy mm-hmm. so that's when i when i followed to the dean, the dean said this is very this is very good mm. so he helped me uh, do the abstract then we now he said okay this team has to be uh, diverse so by that time we added the uh, guys from geography mm-hmm. and uh, also education we, yeah education mm. and the gis mapping and all survey mm. so we did the proposal together applied then the case said they really liked the idea mm-hmm. and they said okay we're gonna fund you guys one million uh, kenya shillings to do a prototype proof of concept on the same mm-hmm. 
Mm. So once we got the million, uh, we said, okay, we have uh, geography yeah, you guys. Be, you're just brushing over one million like that. <laughs> and then, like, so we got the one million and then you know, it was a good day. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Must feel nice to have finally gotten the funding. Yeah, for although something that you uh, you guys thought about. Yes. Sent out. Although although the one million is just for prototyping because making a satellite itself is more than hundred million, mm. even if it's a nano satellite. Uh -huh. Because the cameras itself they cost twenty million. Mm. So that one million is just mm. to to do research, mm -hmm. like you say research grant. And you've done research. Yeah, we have done research research conclusively. And how how is it? Tell us about so, it. So we have we have we started we broke down the satellite into components. Mm -hmm. So after of course after the grant we added more members of the team from aerospace and from mechanical engineering. Mm. So that is basically because of research. So mm. we did research on orbital mechanics, mm. how it's gonna orbit in space. We did research on launching parameters, how we're gonna launch it. Mm. We did research on the structure and the structural integrity. Mm. So that is the strength of this cube itself, mm. the how the satellites, how the solar panels are gonna deploy, how the antennas are going to face, mm. the location of the camera, the stacking. Also, we did research on the motherboard, uh, the components of the satellite inside. That's the sensor board, uh, communication board, mm. the main uh, the main uh, processor, we call it the OBC, onboard computer. Mm -hmm. So we also did research on the, on the um, operating system. Mm -hmm. I was taking a look at the circuit board of uh, the, your prototype. Yeah. And where, where did you get to design this? Which lab did you use? I actually designed it in my laptop. Ooh. Yeah, we okay. design. Uh, so most of the design work is done in Chandaria. Mm. But circuit, one of the values we see as okay, we saw from getting the one million was not just to uh, make something and present at the end of one year or mm -hmm. something. We said, okay, let's take it as a learning process, and also let's have the value that's Kenyan made. So mm. we said, if we can, let's make it here. Mm. So what we cannot make, that's when we can, we're gonna buy like cameras. We cannot make locally, so mm. we are gonna buy them. But circuit boards. I said, okay, I've been training for five years as an electrical engineer. I should right. be able to design. You've been doing sim these simulations. Yeah, for a you. long time in yeah. KU. So we have to... I told the mechanical guys that, you know, you guys have been... This is basically your job. You can't say you can't do. Mm -hmm. Because it's do. been five years. And that's what you've been studying. And what, that's what you've been specializing in. So right. most of those things, which you see tangible things, we made them. Mm -hmm. Like a circuit board, we actually... I, I designed it with a lady called Cynthia Thu. Mm -hmm. So we designed the circuit board uh, for sensors. We also designed a circuit board for communication. Mm -hmm. Your uh, brain is a circuit board at this point. <laughs> so you, you keep coming up with new and new innovations. Now, are we launching this to space? Uh, so the first the first thing, we are, the, uh, the end goal is to take to space. That is 200 kilometers from... Uh, from the Earth's surface, we call it Leo, Little Earth Orbit, mm -hmm. which is the lowest, the lowest orbit. orbit of the, yeah, yeah. So of the satellites, yeah, the satellite there. itself, yeah. Mm. So, but, so you know, taking the satellite to space is very is a costly affair. So the first making it, it's a, making it is a costly affair. Then taking it there, you can even spend millions of money just to take. That's why they have constraints of kgs and size because mm. the bigger it is, the more expensive it becomes. Mm. The weightier it is, the more expensive. So KSA said, okay, the first thing you will do, you will we'll give you a test bed. That is 37 kilometers above the earth. Mm. That is a stratosphere where planes usually. Go so that's the first, that's mm -hmm. the test bed. Mm -hmm. So we launch it there first. We see its communication because if you take the satellite there, the only thing you can do is communicate to it. You can't go and take it and out. take it back and yeah. then fix it and release it. So you have to make sure the communication link is okay and the operation is fine. Mm. So after we do that, that's when we can now proceed to the next phase, which is now taking our model now to space. All right. And uh, now the progress you said is 80%? Yeah, we, we finished all the research we needed in... Uh, we of course cannot finish research but to finish all the documentations we needed uh, by march mm -hmm. so we started assembling and uh, production mm -hmm. of the the parts we had designed and mm -hmm. all those things mm -hmm. so right now we're 80 percent done there are some things which are holding us back because of lead times and special things that which are not uh, uh, locally available mm -hmm. so we're 80 percent done so we are hopefully that by the end of the year or beginning of next year we'll be able to do our test bed all right now i saw also you guys have an operating system yeah. that is among the first ones to be done in Africa or the first one? The first one in Africa, yeah. The first one in Africa. Yeah. You guys just keep on giving us the first or the first, yeah? You guys are pioneers at yeah. Afex. Who designed the operating system? So uh, in the team itself, there's a guy called Alan who does most, he leads the software. So he's, a, he's the one who did the so, uh, operating system design. Of course, the other members contributed because... Mm. Um, it's a team of engineers basically and scientists the mm. geography guys mm -hmm. but he's he's the one who leads it yeah mm -hmm. and it's uh working so far working yeah well. so far we have installed uh, almost all the drivers mm -hmm. so uh the main idea here is uh 
of course once we, we launch uh, we'll have guys from um other guys trying to go out to space mm-hmm. you no know, even here in Kenya maybe private guys will say okay space is now open for business mm-hmm. so we want to go so we said okay why don't we make an OS so that they don't have to make it themselves they can just uh, come and lic- we can license it to them mm-hmm. so okay. that's what we're mm-hmm. making it as robust as possible mm-hmm. yeah ah you're making it um, open source not open source per se but more like windows where if you want to use ah, you have you to can. pay license ah. but you can still use it to any machine hp dell mm-hmm. they can all of them use windows so we are making a robust system mm-hmm. but now it might be license based so that if you want it you'll have to look for license mm-hmm. but you can use it to your any any kind of uh, cube you want to, lo- uh, to launch in space did we have images of the cube my director did we have any images of the cube that uh, fidel is working on that we can show not yet. All right, no problem. What are some of the bottlenecks that you have had to go through in all these innovations that you've done over the years? So um, there's there's a challenge in being the first. Always there's a challenge. But what uh, what keeps us going is that uh, people always remember the first. Mm. Like uh, one day my lecturer gave, uh, gave an example. He asked us in, ch- in class that uh, who's the first man in the moon? And we said, of course, Neil Armstrong. Then he asked us who's the second. We said, we don't, we don't even know the second. <laughs> he said, okay, the world only cares about the first. Mm. So he said, okay, let's pioneer it. So once you take that journey, you need to know that there are challenges. So mm. you need to accept. So for example, number one, the first challenge is, uh, do you know we have been looking for solar panels that go to that CubeSat space grid. Mm. We have not found them locally. They are no not there at all. Yeah. Mm. And the ones that exist abroad, they, they cost as expensive as 400000 for one panel. Wow. So and that, you need a couple of them. I'm and you need f- six of them actually for mm. the six faces. Ah, okay. And one of them costs 400,000 and the grant we're given is 1 million. One million so you see that's half the money goes. So we say, mm. okay, how do we do this? Mm. So these are challenges as in the country itself, no one has ever done a satellite. So no one has any stock right. for Right, and I'm understanding this panels. is obviously also even with the other uh, with the ventilator and uh, yes. the other detection system yes some of the parts you can't find them here you can't find any parts mm. then also uh there's also an aspect of um, like you said uh, d- uh discouragement guys are saying are you sure are you sure you're will it go to mm. space mm. Uh, or you just take it up in the roof <laughs> and say <laughs> it's space yeah. or will it so there's that then of course there is um, um testing you see uh in kenya there are no labs to test uh satellites or vehicles to go to space mm. so if we once we make it i remember this one test we wanted to do is called thermal test to see the thermal integrity and thermodynamics of the thing so that is to see how heat is going to di- be distributed because there you know you're close to the sun mm-hmm. and so heat dissipation is a very big issue there. it's a very big issue then number two you know this thing is moving around the the earth for in 98 minutes it makes complete revolution mm. in 98 minutes so it means in a day it has to make like let's say 15 revolutions in a day mm-hmm. so you see and it's moving very fast because it's moving like 7.8 kilometers per second it's re- moving very 7. fast 8 kilometers per second yeah, it's moving very fast mm-hmm. so you know you know it's changing from uh heat from where the sun is to where it's very, very cold mm-hmm. at a very fast rate mm-hmm. so you see that is a very fast expansion and contraction mm-hmm. so it can lead to thermal deformation and all those things mm-hmm. and the circuit boards so we have to test here first to see how this structure you have to do a simulation here before it before we it go happens, it, yeah mm. so you see there are no labs so one of oh. the people there suggested okay one of the aerospace engineers it's called vigil he said we can test it on the microwave i told him okay microwave can work but it's not really no, the right. ideal the because you have it needs to be a vacuum test mm-hmm. so that those labs might not be locally available so mm-hmm. that's one of the challenges also we also face mm-hmm. so some things we have to believe the theory and assumptions that we make right the government keeps telling us to innovate and they'll support us so it is time that you create labs where fidel is going to test his nano cubat when you were starting out your schooling i'm understanding in your brain you are focused on going to become an engineer but now you've been also plunged into the world of business where you have to be an entrepreneur run a company run a few teams and also be an engineer at the same time is it confusing or have you managed to fuse business and engineering uh <laughs> so at first it's is really confusing when i when i when i f- i started uh, afex and co-founded afex that is i discovered that it's not just about um my machine works it's not mm-hmm. just about ah uh, it's it's working it's about who is willing who's willing to pay mm. uh, do you have clients what is your value proposition all those business terms i did not know mm. thank god for chandari innovation mm. center because they really teach business they, they, they there. taught you how to and they say, okay this is how you make the um, 
it's called the business canvas. This is how you design your business model and all those things. Mm. Then luckily enough, we, it's good to work in a team because in a team, there's always that guy, like the lady called Cynthia, she's really inspired about business. Mm. So she so is, she uh, give you that by aspect. default, mm. she's, she comes from Central Kenya and those guys are businessmen <laughs> by default. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that's, but uh, I think I really love uh, research and uh, engineering. Mm. Uh, being a leader came by default because uh, Mahatma Gandhi said you have to be the change you want to see. Mm -hmm. So you said, okay, uh, yes, if I alone change, it will not change the society. So let me change first, then change my immediate circle. Mm -hmm. That's when I ended up being a leader, actually. Mm -hmm. So I, it's something I, I enjoy doing, inspiring people, mm -hmm. but also insp self-inspiration, then mm -hmm. inspiring people. So every day I challenge myself, can, I, can engineering solve this? Mm -hmm. Then if it can't, I have to make sure it does, have if you, it's possible. Have you come up with a solution that terribly failed like Me extremely he was like oof that was a very good failure <laughs> hey, you know the first time we did the ventilator mm. um you know the entire thing just blew wow guys While don't you were know testing it. The, at the third the thing was the third day mm. so there's this guy he's called derek mm. so he has done all his simulation all the 3d printing mm. and he was doing say theory works so mm. let's test he was the one leading the mechanical team in the ventilator mm -hmm. so we took it we put air in the entire thing just blew Oof, that must have been everyone was seen. everyone was very disappointed and everyone started until the university had to send mentors mm -hmm. to encourage us that this thing uh and happens and that, you know? that happens that yeah, does happen happens. Every... so let's so uh, of how course, do you yes. bounce back from that scenario um do you feel like it's now the end of the ventilator or you are like we can pass through this so the most important person in a team is the team leader mm. so even if everyone uh, loses hope mm -hmm. you're not supposed to lose hope mm -hmm. even if you're the only one who's standing you have to stand otherwise the team collapses it's not that one member is actually the team that is the most important person mm -hmm. so what i did is uh, i said okay because you had worked on all the theories but the entire thing has, <laughs> has so failed, what right? do we do <laughs> so we had to go back to the drawing board i said guys you know if, if you want to solve a, a, let's say a mathematical uh, equation or a, a question in mathematics and mm -hmm. uh, well, you will get the wrong answer. It might not be the entire formula. It might be one small value you replace wrongly, right? Mm. I told guys, okay, you know, maybe it's not the entire thing which is wrong. Maybe it's just one small problem. Troubleshoot parts of it and see what... Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the word, troubleshooting. So we mm -hmm. started from... And we found that actually it's one small problem. Mm -hmm. That's how we bounce back. I'm hoping when it blew up, your the guys who are discouraging you are not around. Or no, no, it was, no one here. even knew. <laughs> As in, uh, ah. I, I really like what the, what the vice chancellor did because our VC is mo mostly not into PR, mm -hmm. but into practical research. Because mm -hmm. he didn't allow us to go public until... Mm -hmm. Every, he used to come every day in Chandaria and said, okay, is this thing working? Mm. Then they saying, it's working, but he said, no, that bat fixed it. We are mm. not going public with bats. Mm. So yeah, Saturday, even Saturday, he came and said, is it working? Mm. Said, so I have 90%, but he said, no, mm. you have to make sure 100% is working. Mm, so right. that's really, that's really helped us when we went out there. They, these guys were saying, uh, uh, they, all, they, all, uh, they all all like, ah, Impressed. This, they did it. Right. Yeah. So make sure that when you're innovating something, you, you troubleshoot. Make me not be the whole thing, yeah? If you have a few problems and you feel like you have a bat in your statement, it's working, but uh, just cut the bat. We know that uh, hips don't lie, but we don't want to go public with the bats. Now, we're getting to the game. We're going to cut it. Uh, going to cut the conversation a bit before we come back, maybe and wrap up. Um, welcome to name the brand. Yeah, this game is called name the brand. Today we have uh, one question, and uh, the question we are going to count down from. We have the timer. So question number one is: You're going to write ten laptop brands starting now. Right, we're done. Ooh, okay. My goodness, is there another question? All right, that was question number one, right? Um, question number two, starting right about now, name 10 IKEA, IKEA brands. Name 10 sunglasses, sunglass brands. So we begin now, yeah? <laughs> mm. 
We are above time. We are way past you guys. Run us the timer. <laughs> Guys, I have no idea. All right, all right, right. You gave us a head start there, but uh, looks like we might not have needed to have the head start. Nimefumble hapo mwisho mbaya sana. Sioni kitu. Nani, nani brands za ma, vitu za kuona anyway let's see what we got uh, we're going to swap the papers and then mark against each other i was receiving if you're at home and you are playing the first question was 10 brands for laptops the second one was name 10 brands for eye care prod, eye care that is glasses contacts anything lenses everything in between Hiya, let's see what Fidel wrote here. Love that I lose for the first time. This guy has been winning for a long time. He's winning too much in this life thing. Eh? Hiya, let's begin. Ten laptop brands. Number one, Alienware. He wrote Alienware. Yeah, they're saying yes. Is that... Which yeah, brand is that? I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is HP. He wrote Dell and Lenovo, MacBook. And they, of course, Surface by Microsoft. Yeah. So, what did I, what did I have there? They want to hear what I got. Okay. Uh, number one, you wrote Dell, then HP, mm -hmm. then HP. MacBook, uh, then Asus, then Lenovo, then Samsung. Wrote six. I wrote six. Hey, naka ni kama tu mendi sita sita apo. Ata mimi bana. Ata mimi nano cube. Nano cube. Ah. Tende. The second one was. Uh, 10 brands of eye care, right? So he wrote Optica, Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. Gucci Eco. <laughs> okay, and that's where he stopped. Let's see mine. Okay, uh, frankly, I don't know uh, lenses or ah. I don't know. Uh, oh, you've never had that problem? I've never had it. I don't, but I look like I'm winning in that one. That's why, that's why I don't <laughs> even know how to spell this. Optica. There's Optica. Lapair. Lapia. Mm. Yeah. And okay. Ray Barnes. An account. I won! <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I won. That. I got three. Mm. Um, he got two. And six. So that's eight out of 20. Mm. Uh, is there funding for people who, <laughs> <laughs> who win it in the games? <laughs> yeah, so that's nine out of 20 for man like Okeze here. Uh, Fidel got eight. But, uh, you know, OG, I'm waiting for the W. But this was a win, so OGW, okay, easy. Right, <laughs> thank you very much for having the conversation and for playing this game with me. Of course, to uh, excite things up a bit. Let's move your brands, Baba. See you in a job, I'm engineering too. Kweli, anything that you're looking forward to from Afex in the near future, apart from the Nano? And what's, what, what are the developments we're waiting from uh, the Cube? Uh, so I'll start with the first question. Yes. So Afex is the tech company to watch in the next five years. Um, I would tell these guys. Okay. Afex is the tech <laughs> company to watch in the next five years. Uh, currently, Afex is actually led by Cynthia Thuo. She is very agile, uh, she, very innovative. She knows how to. She knows her stuff. So the team there is working hard. There's a lot of. In, there's one big innovation which is coming. Uh, so expect a lot from Afex. I know. I, it's only that I can't disclose. Mm -hmm. Please now, don't. You guys are pioneers. We you want guys to need to. Uh, we're gonna change the face of technology with that innovation. So I expect a lot from it. Uh, for the nano nano cube, uh, it's the first time I ask you. We're doing it, and um, guys are excited. Uh, so what we're doing is um, we are making sure that every day we run tests, we don't fail, because it's very important the pioneers don't fail, so that others can be encouraged to do the same. So uh, the progress is, uh, I want to tell uh, maybe people out there and people who follow that yes, we've been able to finish the orbital mechanics. We have a guy there called Stoa, aerospace engineering. The guy does a lot of maths. Mm -hmm. So we, are conclu we have concluded on that. We have already established the elliptical orbit. It's gonna be these kilometers from the earth, this the revolution time. So we have also uh, uh, launching parameters. It's being led by Vigil. Thermodynamics is Gile has already worked on that. The uh, uh, sampling and surveying, all those things have been worked by the geographers, that is Eric, Lydia, and uh, Barbara. Mm. So all, everyone had actually their own job. Uh, Cynthia was focusing on signal processing and machine learning. 
does machine learning. There's Alan who had focused on uh, operating system. So there's also mentors, Dr. Mambo, Dr. Mungera. So everyone has been putting their hands on deck. So the, the math works. We have been able to freeze on that. So uh, once we launch it, it's going to be revolutionary because apart from taking images, we, are, we, are, we allow you to ping to it. That basically means that if you have a drone and you want to drive it, you can actually use our satellite to control your drone. Mm. So it has a big, so you can control your drone in Western Kenya and you're here mm, nice. because it has a very big footprint. That is so that's great. one of the things you're putting on board. So, mm. and uh, the math is already worked. The link budget has been done. So expect a lot of, once we launch, expect a lot of fun stuff with the satellite itself. All right. That is yeah. super great. And as you said, pioneers do not have that room for failure. If you're pioneering in something, make sure that you are setting the standard. To see what you're doing so that we can have a future generation of people who are innovating and bringing out new solutions. I know we have sat here a couple of times and said, oh, Tuna uh, Innovations are Kutosha to put us out there in the map. Afex are doing that. They're currently innovating back to back since last year from the ventilator to the the temperature detection machine yeah. Yeah, it's called Apollo. Um, also now we the nanocube yeah so quite some good stuff there you guys should be definitely encouraged to do that and we can hope that in future what to come and NASA wana kuja kwa kwa wanafanya consultants, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the dream. <laughs> right, that's the dream. And not NASA, the hile nyingine ya watu wa kelele. Right, that is what is um, happening in terms of uh, the nano cube that uh, they are doing here at Kenyatta University with Fidel on me here on set trying to understand how they have been doing the progress so far, the bottlenecks that they've had to face. If you know where they can do uh, some of those lab tests that they want and you're out there and you're a scientist and you want to reach out to them, I think you should say where they can find you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the room where we work from is in Chandare Innovation Center, uh, first floor. Mm -hmm. There is actually the Afex office. So is it an Afex? In Kenyatta University. In Kenyatta University, yeah. Kenyatta University. So if you want to reach out, you can reach out through the dean, uh, Dr. Shadrak Mambo, because he's the principal investigator, mm. or Dr. Mongera, the mentor. So reach out to us and, uh, yeah. Okweli. Kweli. Shukra sana Fidel for coming through. And Thank I'm you wishing you all me. the best. The next time, kwa karibu kuwin ka milioni unanieta unaniambia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also uh, an engineering student, so I might put wow. in some few inputs on uh, signal processing and telecommunication devices that you guys have there. That okay. is my pitch. Right. <laughs> we are taking a short break here on KUTV on Rise Today, Biashara Tuesday. Don't go too far. I'm taking a look to see what comments you guys have, especially on the conversation we'd had, we've had and on business because we've been running the show since 7 to now. What questions do you have and what did you get? In name the brand that we just played 10 laptop brands and 10 IKEA brands. Do you know any? What do you score? Tell me in the comments. The hashtag we are Tuesday. I'll be right back. <laughs>